Hey gang, it's Rob. In today's video, we're gonna go over some questions, some answers, and scenarios that's gonna make the test a little less scary than it is right now. So make sure that you stay around to the end of the video and let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. All right, let's go ahead and get straight into it. We're gonna go ahead and go through the 1001 A plus test prep. So for all of you guys that are new to the CompTIA exam, uh, the CompTIA exam is an exam that consists of two tests so you got to pass the first part and the second part so just this one that we're going to be talking about today is going to be going over the first part which is the 1001 uh, as per this recording until they uh, update it so to pass 1001 you need a 675 out of 900 expect to get multiple choice questions performance based questions and a few uh, simulations and as well as you're going to have 90 minutes to knock out 90 questions. Now, that can sound scary. That can sound crazy. But um, if you prepare properly and you study, you'll be fine. Once you get into the exam room, you can go ahead and uh, knock down all this stuff. So you ready for the uh, first question? Very good. Before we get to that, make sure that you like this damn video and you subscribe. I'll give you a few minutes to go ahead and do that. And let's go. All right, so the first question. Johnny is currently renting a vacation home in Florida. For some reason, he can't access any websites. He is unable to visit any sites outside his local network. He calls an IT company and a tech arrives immediately. The first thing the tech does is ping ESPN.com because I guess he wants to see what LeBron is doing and he gets no replies. The tech pings IP address connected with ESPN and he gets a reply. What command line command may resolve this issue? All right. Hopefully, since you guys are super smart, you got flush DNS. So DNS is what's used to resolve a website name to an IP address. And if you flush the DNS, pretty much get rid of the settings in the DNS and then let it refresh, then a lot of times it'll actually be able to resolve the issue that Johnny was having. All right, we're going to go through these questions just like this. We'll read the question. I'll give you guys some time to answer it. We'll figure out what the answer is as a family. Then I'll tell you why that's the answer. Sound good? All right. Ricky is a real estate agent with several hundred clients. He needs to have access to his appointments at all times. He desires to purchase a web-connected planner. The planner allows him to stay on top of all his clients. What would the planner application be classified as? All right. Since you guys are super smart, I know you got this. It was too easy. SaaS or software as a service. So that application would be considered software as a service. You don't have to develop anything, you don't have to download anything. Everything is there whenever you need it. So software as a service. The other ones are platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and D, I just made that shit up. That's not that's not a thing. Okay? So software as a service, that's what this application or appointment planner would be. All right, Raven is a senior network engineer. She is checking behind one of her junior technicians. The tech was supposed to install several data racks in the data center. Raven needs to ensure the data center is a safe working environment. So she ensures all racks are grounded. What tool can ensure the racks are grounded? Very good, too easy. So a multimeter can ensure that you have a proper electrical ground so nothing gets shorted out, nobody goes in there and gets shot, so on and so forth. Next, Jake is looking for a security solution that proactively seeks out threats. The most persistent threat seems to be the land being affected by outside attackers. What should Jake use to make the network more secure against outside threats. So 
hopefully you guys got this right he will use an IPS now since we're here uh, understand that on the actual exam it's gonna be a lot of acronyms right a lot of acronyms and if you don't know what the acronym stand for it can pretty much make you take a L or a loss when you're actually taking a test so IPS stands for intrusion prevention system another thing that you need to do inside the testing center when you take an exam is look for keywords so in the actual question it said uh, proactively seeks out threats right proactively uh, seeks out threats so an IPS actually looks for things and wants to stop them an IDS which is an intrusion detection system doesn't really do anything until an event actually happens so an IPS is preventative and tries to be proactive and look for stuff before it causes any damages um, and another thing uh, gang as we're going through this no no this isn't the questions that's going to be on the damn exam. No. Uh, that's happened in other videos. Like, is this the questions that's going to be on the test? No, dummy. That's uh, cheating. But anyway, uh, you guys are super smart. You, you don't think that. You, there's no way you think that. So let's go to the next thing. Uh, you are a project manager for Master IT. You need to order several motherboards for your servers. You look through your supply vendor's documentation and find the motherboard vendor's agreement. Your current vendor charges one flat fee per motherboard socket. Which of the following options would be best for the company's overall bottom line when it comes to budget and performance? All right. So a single processor with 10 overclock cores. If that doesn't make sense to you, read the question again and it should soak in so the main thing they were worried about was performance but also the budget and remember the agreement was per socket right so per motherboard cpu socket per socket so each processor goes inside of a socket all the rest of these were multi uh, processors or multi socket or multiple CPUs except the first one now the difference between the first one and the actual answer is that overclocking a CPU is going to make it faster than hyper threading a CPU okay so this is one of the things when you get inside of the testing center the questions uh, a lot of times aren't straightforward they may be uh, convoluted that's another big ass word uh, but they may just you know pretty much go across the country when all they had to do was cross the street to get to the answer that you were looking for makes sense all right all right Greg is a network engineer for IP Inc he is having a great day until he suddenly is bombarded with service tickets many of the service tickets state that users are getting an error stating duplicate IPs present users state they are unable to browse the internet which of the following servers should Greg take a look at? Very good, too easy. So the DHCP server. The DHCP server is responsible for assigning IP addresses. Uh, what happened? I almost <laughs> assigned IP addresses uh, automatically, right? So if there's an issue, uh, that's the first place he would look because that's what's responsible for actually assigning um, IP addresses and nobody should be getting the same IP address, okay? Uh, you currently are a help desk lead at Master IT. Oh, wait a minute. Before we get into this, if you haven't done so, stop what you're doing, like this video, and subscribe and share it with somebody that can benefit, all right? Anyway, you currently are a help desk lead at the Master IT. You are tasked with migrating all user data. Your supervisor wants all upper management data stored on premise, while all junior level staff data will be stored in the cloud. What type of storage model will you be setting up? Hopefully you guys picked hybrid. So a hybrid model has some stuff on premise, some stuff on the cloud. That's simple. Angel is a CEO of a company based out of Detroit. Due to several employees falling ill in the office, she thinks it's best for everyone to work from home. One of her major concerns is that the level of security won't be the same at home 
as it is in the office. She wants a solution that will allow her team to work from home while securing the information being sent. Which of the following will best suit her needs? So hopefully you guys picked none of those. So VPN without tunneling would pretty much be a VPN without encryption. Uh, antivirus with remote triggering, I made that up. Uh, virtual private network using STF, I made that up as well. Uh, VPN with dual monitoring trigger points, once again, something that is not real. All right, so um, when you get inside the box, make sure that if you feel a certain way to stick with your gut, but it's none of those. It would just have been a regular old VPN or right, using a VPN to secure the traffic from the person's home to their uh, company network. As always, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you're looking for more practice questions, you can head over to itmasterkey.com. There is a link in the description to all of our A-plus practice tests. Or if you need more than just practice tests, we have a full A-plus self-paced online course. Other than that, I'll see you in class.